So welcome to this channel. And today I invite our friends uh, in America and uh, in the Europe who practice the 1850s Wing Chun for one year or more to share their experience on their learning, their uh, set practice, their body conditioning, their sparring, and how they teach in their school, how their student uh, benefit from it, like it or not like it. So uh, here I let everybody here to share your experience, okay? Please introduce yourself, who you are, and then uh, let the entire world know uh, what is the, uh, the, 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 the experience of practice the 1850s Wing Chun, so people know, know what is going on. So anybody can start as you like. Anyone want to start first? Uh, uh, let me start. Um, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Um, um, I uh, I followed a lot of classes by Hendrik, and um, uh, first I did. Oh no, I'm yeah. Raheem of Westburg. Please, uh, please explain. Uh, please share who you are first. I uh, I'm Raheem of Westburg. I live in the, the Netherlands, and um, uh, I'm practicing. Uh, 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 first, I started when I was young with boxing, and later on, I did uh, Wing Chun 1970 of 1870 uh, for a long time. Uh, I, I was there, Sifu, uh, as they call that in, in, in Europe. I don't mind it anymore, but uh, that uh, it, it, I was. And, um, and uh, after maybe 21 years or something, of, I met uh, Hendrik and I follow. Since then, I follow the Wing Chun 8050. So <clears throat> I uh, changed all my uh, trainings, what we, what we did before, in what we do now in the 8050. And uh, the, the main thing is, is that it uh, is much more re realistic and um, uh, more uh, exercise. Uh, uh, we do sparring, um, there's mo much more depth in, in the training, you explain more, uh, because I give also training uh, about uh, 12 years on the, on the students, I have my own school with somebody else, with Remco Steffers, uh, we do, uh, both we do uh, the 8050 Wing Chun only, and um, there's uh, so much difference than uh, before. Uh, now it's more uh, building a basic, like the breathing and the, the mind and the body has to be loose and open. And, uh, and um, there, there is mu much, much more content and not doing seesaw or programs. Before the, we did programs uh, every uh, couple of months. And, uh, and, and if you know that program, you go to the next and you get a degree. And uh, now we don't uh, work with degrees anymore and we practice from the basic so you get better and better, better in the short strike. And, um, and then you have to do, train a lot to make it efficient. And uh, um, uh, maybe I can uh, talk some, uh, let somebody else talk what, what he thinks. Maybe I can tell later no, some things. I can say something. Uh, my name is Daniel. I am originally Italian. I live in Germany. So I, I grew up in Germany. And I'm lean, leading a, a teaching Wing Chun since uh, 2001. And uh, I've been practicing with Hendrik uh, six years now. And uh, since then, I'm teaching the Wing Chun 1850. And uh, Yes, and to me it's uh, more realistic. So I do um, sparring with other martial arts um, systems, and uh, yes, yeah, more efficient, and I'm I'm really having uh, results. So 
it's not about winning or losing, so it's more about exchanging and um, the 1850, the, the shoot in, fill in, and make space or step back when the opponent is too too fast or too big or whatever. So um, it works. And uh, yeah, many people who uh, spar with me from such as Thai boxers, MMA players, and uh, kickboxers, so and boxers also, they say, um, how come you get every time so close? Because they don't, they're not used to it and they love it. And they, they ask me, how do you do that? How come you're so fast? And I, I they even don't notice it. So do the half, half step, like you explained in the, your last video, Hendrik, and uh, all this stuff and it works. So I always get in and try to, to, to be as close as, as I can and, uh, you know, and make people, or the, my, my sparring partners as much problems or as many problems as I can. So so to me, it makes fun. It's more realistic. I can, you know, at least I have something to work on. And um, before I did the, um, yeah, let's call it 1817, uh, 70 um, Wing Chun, which, also, which was all about Chi Sao and all that stuff. And they... Well, to me, it didn't work at all. So it was more just choreography all the time, and choreography doesn't work in a, you know, when you have ex exchange of momentum, and uh, you don't have the time to play with your arms, and you have to be really fast and dodge away and move away. You have to be fast on your your body with your legs, unless you get problems and uh, with chi sao, which is also always straight line. It doesn't have to do anything with, uh, you know, with um, short swipe because you always have you know this kind of distance which is more yeah one arm long and which is not which 1850 at all so it's a completely different dis system and i'm experiencing it with my sparring partners and i'm having a lot of fun with this well about it's, yes that's my my uh, experience with it well my name's daniel and I'm from Wales in the UK. I've been practicing Wing Chun for about 10 years now. Seven years of it, I was practicing X Man Wing Chun. And I was always really passionate about Wing Chun. It always, would always be on my mind, always be just all that I thought about. And like sometimes I come into my get to my trip points to my training, where I hit like a block road and couldn't move any further. And I'd be like, what's going on? And I'd be thinking, like, trying to find new techniques and stuff to find solve my problems and that. And I'd be sol um, following Hendrix's YouTube channel. And he would share videos that said something like, watch this video and you, your wing channel will change, will improve by a year. And, like, things like that. And I'd look at it. And it would also dramatically change my um, wing channel. And I'd go to class the next week, trying what Hendrix had been sharing. And... I'd always be getting amazing results from it. And um, one big one I remember when Hendrik said about the arms should be receiving and that your body should be coming forward as your arm comes back. And that changed my wing chun a lot. Um, rather than create, trying to hold space, I realized the problem is, is filling in the space and taking in any space that I have and trying to get as close to the body and stick into the body and then I reached out to Hendrik around that time and luckily started to learn from him and I've been learning off him now for four years yeah so I can I can also share um a little bit um I don't have as much experience as uh, the rest of you but um Similar to what uh, Daniel said, um, I also reached out to Hendrik after various years practicing Wing Chun because um, because there were certain things that didn't make any sense to me in what we were doing. Um, so I was practicing uh, uh, a branch of uh, uh, post 1870s Wing Chun, and I had a lot of questions um, because I. I uh, things weren't working, you know. Um, I didn't really understand uh, the static 
nature of what we were doing and the lack of mobility. Um, I also didn't see, uh, I didn't seem to see it as logical as standing in front of someone and going in a straight line um, as every kind of attack. Um, and so from then I, I started to watch, as Daniel so I started to watch Hendrix YouTube and, um, and then I got in contact with him. And then I, I think it all really changed when, um, recently, I mean, in the last, in the last year or year and a half, two years, when I started studying, uh, the, the first book, The Six Core Elements, um, and how that changes, uh, everything you do. Cause I, I don't, I don't only do, uh, winter and I also do some stand up grappling and some wrestling too. Um, and so it, it's been, it's been great to notice how, um, how aware of your body you become and how that can benefit you from day to day. Uh, so you can get on with your normal life as well without having like strange, uh, repeating injuries, um, you know, getting out of breath, um, I don't know, a whole holistic level, um, how you train not only within martial arts, but how you function on a day to day basis, how the six core elements forms the basis of, uh, of what you do. Uh, and can benefit uh, benefit you in all in all sort of in all sort of uh, aspects of your daily life. So so yeah, if if the six core elements form the basis eighteen uh, fifties Winton, then um, then we should all be studying it really. <laughs> um, so that's my kind of my quick synopsis. It's important for all martial arts, isn't it? Yeah. So I'm uh, Mahen. Um, I've been uh, following uh, Henrik for um, a number of years now. Um, initially, I started uh, uh, to study the 1960 or 1875 um, approaching uh, uh, Wing Chun. Uh, uh, kind of uh, education uh, uh, but um so um but when you kind of try to apply uh, it with um, friends who uh, were practicing uh, especially muay thai and other uh, boxing um, other type of martial arts um, it was some um, difficult to um, manage uh, uh, those fights i mean i could uh, handle a kind of a, a smaller uh, individual uh, effectively, but when the um, opponent was uh, larger um, and uh, he had the speed to come at me, uh, it was quite um, difficult to handle him. And then um, once I started to learn the 1850 uh, platform uh, through Henrik, um, so I understood that um, we did not really, as insurance, we really um, don't know um, what um, Wing Chun is or the terminology, what we used to um, know about. It. I mean, simple things like what is loose and how do you achieve that state? And um, wh what that, does that um, help in our sparring? Um, or oh, training to be a, a martial artist. So, um, so I started uh, to follow the six thirteen three, and then uh, initially make a lot of mistakes, and then uh, uh, thanks to Hendrik's guidance, uh, corrected the, as much as uh, uh, those mistakes, and then got the handle of uh, uh, the basics of it. And um, then um, I understood that. Um, uh, the the six thirteen three gives us a kind of a screening tool to understand where we are at um, in our martial arts journey. And then, if you are in a certain state, um, you can handle uh, this, and if you are not, you cannot handle it. And so um, uh, that is um, my kind of uh, um, experience. Uh, we can talk about it more in detail later. So okay, let let me say this. So Mahem, you run marathon, right? Right, yeah. What does it, all this this uh, this uh, 1850s Wing Chun help you? Does it help you to run marathon better? 
อยู่เชียวิทยาลัยดาวดาวซึ่งเดี๋ยวนี้ like for me I mean uh, um it's like uh, 500% difference uh, when I kind of uh, learn how to handle um, uh, the 613 different states of uh, uh, the body the breathing and and um, 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 the circulation and all that so um, it, it was like a significant difference um, and how um, uh, how Henrik uh, kind of uh, uh, teach us to um, Um, like to manage the heart rate, different heart rate zones. So those things help me to run like miles and miles uh, uh, without getting um, tired and without getting injury. And when I am, I I know when I should stop, and um, when I can go, and then what should I do when I'm tired and how to recover and uh, charge myself. So that that's. Uh, <laughs> the the reason I mentioned this is because if you read Bruce Lee's letter, that letter saying that uh, Wing Chun is land swimming. In that letter, if I'm not wrong, he said that he start running, of those kind of training. So, you like it or not? Uh, if you want to train to fight. Then sprinting, sprinting, is not something you can avoid. Like in my book, uh, decoding Wing Chun, you know, I present it really clearly. So you know that if you are Thai boxer, you are Western boxer, you are Kyokushin, you run. Okay, you sprint. You need that 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 to do that get energy. So. It has to help that that aspect of life, and of course, if you don't sprint, even you run marathon and so forth, it has to help you. See, Wing Chun eighteen fifty is not like today's MMA. Wing Chun eighteen fifty and all the Chinese martial arts, not the martial art after the uh, the 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 end of the Qing Dynasty, which is made up this past one hundred something years. It always have a component of condition your body, so it's always saying that you you be able to strengthen your body. Okay. So if you ask, what do you, why do you learn kung fu? The first thing you will say, strengthen my body, and then self defense. So it's very different than today's. Like I, I can fight you, I can beat you. No, no, no. It is about number one, strengthen your body, or make yourself healthy. Okay, so that's Chinese kung fu. You have that part, and then for the, for the self defense. Okay, and self defense, of course, is is fighting. Because eighteen fifty Wing Chun, we like it or not, it is. The uh, anti Qing Wing Chun, which is is from the Ming military. Why do they do that? Well, they they look for uprising. And if you look at the uh, the the, the anti Qing, you know, up to in America, which is the uh, the, the the Chinese Freemason, you see, even they are in America, they still support financially to Sun Yat Sen to take down the the the, the Qing. Dynasty become the modern China, so those are military stuff. Okay, it is not about like in the movie who is the best fighter. Those are actually very Western, Western influence stuff. In the ancient, if you do that, those those kinds of number one thing and everything, you might get kicked out from uh from. From your school, because if you look at in the Shaolin temples code of moral, one of it is like, if you go out there and just uh, take the challenge for fighting, see who's number one, you out. Because what, Shaolin temple is a real Shaolin temple, not the fake one, not like today's communist run Shaolin temple, is teaching for Buddhist 
teaching, which means compassionate. Even people insult you, you must not uh, fight back or hatred. You need to understand human beings like that, so you pardon him. That's, that's the teaching of, uh, of, of Buddhas. So you don't have this Shaolin temples try to challenge Mui Fai Chi Sim Chi Sim Fai whatever. And then if you look at the story, like Mui Fai Chi Sim uh, student, and then and all this Feng Sei Yu Hu Fai Hu. Come on, those, those are the stories, uh, fictions uh, written in Canton, uh, late 1800s. Those, those are not real Buddhists. Okay? So number one is your body has to do better in daily life. If you run marathon, it will be better. Now, Nimjo loved to go sparring with his friend. Okay, test out does uh, work or not. Does the 613 tree help you to, to on that aspect in the uh, handling? Not about win or loss, but you know, checking out yourself. How do you respond? Does it yeah. help you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I just to be up to date. I just came back in the last two weeks from holiday. I was away for three weeks, um, and then I came back, and I've been training every day for the last week. So five days, I did six classes, and one of them was a wrestling class, um, and. You know, wake up in the morning and you're able to gauge yourself uh, depending on, you know, you're, you're aware of, of how deep you're breathing, how shallow you're breathing, how tight your chest is. Um, you know, you know who you want to spar with um, because you're not going to go with the guy who's going maybe at, who's 25 years old, he's going at 85% because I'm 46 years old. Right? And, and so I know that... Um, I know that I'm not going to get in a situation. Whereas beforehand, before I had the 613.3, maybe I wasn't even conscious. Maybe, you know, things like um, a kind of sports ego mentality of winning, uh, and you just you you put yourself to the limit all the time. You put yourself to the test. And then, and then uh, more often than not, what happens is you end up with, uh, yeah, you're out of training for a week or two weeks or maybe one month because you've got a, uh, twisted ankle, uh, I don't know, dislocated something. Um, and, and what's more, you know, after training, we all love Wing Chun, we all love the training we do, the martial arts training, but you've got to come back home and you've got to have your have your responsibilities and your obligations and you've got to go to work and you've got to uh, take care of the family. And, like, it's no good if you can't get up in the morning, right, because you, cause you uh, sprain your ankle or you're, or, you, or you're out of breath, your chest hurts, you know? It's worrying. It causes anxiety. So, so the six thirteen three changes uh, changes a lot of that. And then, of course, if we're talking about sparring, then the moment you're doing something with someone, uh, at the beginning you're very aware of what you're doing and uh, how you're moving. And then, as you uh, become more proficient in it, you you become aware of what both of you are doing and what the other person is doing too. So, this is a you know it's like like sparring is a you know, symbiosis is a relationship between two people. It's important that you, you are conscious of what the other person is doing. And not just in sparring, but I mean, for me, the most important thing is what I, what I said before, you got to get up, you got to get up in the morning. You got to do your, do your life. So no good, you know, putting yourself in a situation where you're pushing yourself to the limit. And what I can see from people who don't practice the 613.3 is repetitive injuries. Uh, um, not consistency, not consistent in in the martial arts they practice. Uh, they're worried, they're insecure about what they do, um, and a lot of the time in a sparring situation, that's really dangerous, you know, because you you can either injure yourself or get hit. So, so uh, it changes your the way you 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 envision what you do, right? So now, you're, you're, not, you're not pretending to be the best fighter. Now, the reason I ask that question, let me share with you. Martial art is actually uh, progressing every time. If you watch the interview of uh, Rickson Garcia, 
one of the best of the BJJ. If you watched his interview on or his podcast on breathing, you know he have a lot of handling on his body. And for Wing Chun 1850, if you don't have this six core element, you have no way to know what Rickson is talking about. We are not talking about, oh, I'm better than you. Forget about it. You just want to know when, when like people like Rickson talk, we need to listen because he is a good, he's a pro. So if you don't have this basic, we will not be able to know what it is. Even far away to achieve what is the basic like Rickson have. That's how serious it is. This is a realistic stuff. It's not like a, uh, yeah, six core element. Then you go teach a six core element class, chi, okay? You look around today in the world, like this, uh, yeah, I open, there's one time, there's one people say, because he, uh, this person uh, have a six core element seminar. So in the forum, one guy, who went to the formula, uh, the, the, the seminar to say, Hendrik will get pissed off, okay? Knowing that now the secret is out. Well, sorry, Hendrik never get pissed off if you really know your stuff. Like, uh, like, like, uh, like, uh, uh, Nim Cho here. He know what it is in the basic. So when he listen, say, like to the, uh, Rickson Garcia's podcast, he know right away, oh, Rickson had this, this is the group, I never reached this yet, I can work on this, and so forth, so forth. I will never get pissed, and if you could, there are many people in Europe, which is, I encourage them to teach 613.3. I don't want the name name here, and I don't need royalty. Why? Do good to people. But those bullshit, like uh, internal, the six core element. Hey, if it's not even in your body, stop teaching it. So like this person who said, well, Henry will get pissed off. Well, I don't get pissed off. I just say, why, why are you going spend money on nonsense? Okay, so that, that is my, uh, my, uh, my bottom line on it. And okay, time is... Uh, up for those sessions, we're going to take a rest and come back, okay? So uh, for more, like uh, training Xiu Lin Tao here, okay? Like the, this guy, uh, uh, Daniel here from Wales, uh, you know, where I, he, he, he is suffering like hell, you know, with me for one year on this Xiu Lin Tao practice, okay? So I want him to share next when we come yeah, back, okay? And I uh, see uh, how bad am I with a teacher, okay? So uh, let's uh, take a break now. <laughs>